Today we're going over the Mike Bartos Power Center Pro Economy Yoke. What we're going to cover today is the description of the yoke, my usage notes, as well as some versatility options, some feedback that I think I could give to Mike Bartos over at Mike Bartos Power Center, and then a market comparison where I'm going to give you an equal option and then also something that's less expensive that is probably more approachable for most people. But before we talk about any other options that are out there on the market, I want to cover this yoke. It is a two by three inch material, meaning it's two inches wide by three inch. Those of you that have been around for a while will recognize this as being the equivalent of what used to be the standard. So this is like the infinity line from Rogue, two by three design. The total yoke height is 94 inches tall, although it should be noted that on the website it does claim that it is 84 inches tall, which is a slight discrepancy. The total inside width from this edge to this edge is 45 and a half inches. And because it is a two by three material, that puts it at 49 and a half inches from the outside to the outside, although it should be noted that the screws, the tightening knobs on the outside, measure about an additional inch and a half on each side, so you have a total width of about 52 inches. For those of you that have a normal size garage door, having a yoke that is 84 or 90 inches tall does create a little bit of an issue getting in and out of the garage because the yoke is taller than the garage door, but I will cover how to get by that a little bit later in the video. The 90 inch tall uprights do have a three quarter inch, or it's actually just less than three quarter inch hole that starts at the 24 inch point. That's 24 inches from the floor to the center of the first hole. And it is two inch hole spacing all the way up to the 86 inch point. Something of note and something that's different than other yokes, uh, especially from Rogue, is that it does not have the west side hole spacing that's going through this area. It should be noted that because of the diameter of the hole and the two by three inch material, that if you have leftover infinity lines equipment or just any two by three manufactured equipment with a five eighths inch pin, it should be compatible with this rack. Although there is some slight, very, very slight issues that occur with the hole size being just a little bit bigger than standard. The horizontal feet that are along the bottom are made out of the exact same two by three material that make up the vertical uprights. They are 46 inches long and that is from the tip to tip. There's a slight angle at the very edge. There are two loading pins per side. They are located nine inches from the vertical upright, which makes it easy to accommodate any standard 45 pound plate. And in addition to them being located close, they're made out of solid steel and they are nicely welded to the bottom. One way that these do differ from a lot of the competition is that these don't have a sacrificial, a sacrificial foot that has the loading pin attached to it like most other companies have. What this has is basically just the two by three material along the bottom, and that two by three material is what sits on the ground. A big advantage that this has over a lot of the competition is that it is a welded vertical upright, which affords you some advantages and a lot of ease of use when it comes to adjusting height, especially if you're someone that trains at a gym or you have people over at your gym, and there's a lot of different users and a lot of different adjustments that need to be made. One downside to the all welded construction is that it does significantly mark up the shipping cost of the yoke itself, which we will get into later in the video. Now I've covered a lot of Mike Bartos equipment before and one of the things that I've always liked about his equipment is that he does cap off all of the ends. So this hollow two by three tube, which would normally just be open and if you look at the market, most of them are open tubes that just have a plastic cap shoved in the end. These are actually welded using some diamond plate and it's welded both down here on each side as well as at the top of the upright. With the upright being welded shut, it does potentially create a slight limit to the versatility that this piece of equipment is normally used for. And again, we'll cover that a little bit later. The crossmember itself is a three inch material with five inch tall brackets on either side. It uses a single five eighths inch pin with a retention cotter pin on the end, as well as a tightening knob to remove any slack from the yoke. The entire yoke is finished in a textured black powder coat. Uh, you can custom order this for colors, but you have to get with Mike Bartos on the website to get a custom color. For me, I wanted the textured black powder coat because I think that Mike Bartos's power coat is really one of the best that is in the market.
That whole package is put together and ships to you and weighs, this one in particular weighed 145 pounds when I got it back in the gym. I did measure that by stepping on a scale, tearing it, and then picking the yoke up and stepping up onto the scale. It weighed in at 146.2 pounds. So I just round down to 145 just to make the math easier and because I'm kind of lazy like that. So that's the general overview of the yoke itself. Now that we've talked about that, I'm gonna give you guys my training notes after using this for several months. Now obviously, this is a yoke. It's designed to be used and as a yoke, and when you use it as a yoke, it functions perfectly. There is a larger yoke that is available from Mike Bartos Power Center. However, the reason that this one was created was because that other one weighed 300 pounds empty, and it was just kind of expensive for most people to really put into their home gym. There are some design features that Mike Bartos has to his yoke. For instance, the all welded construction. And then one thing that I did think was way different, because he doesn't do the sacrificial feet that are bolted onto the ends where the loading pins are loaded, he actually puts the loading pins a little bit closer to the upright. So as a yoke, it works perfectly as a yoke. And when I say used as a yoke, what I mean is it's loaded onto your back and you carry it for distance. I will talk a little bit more about using it as a yoke a little bit later. I wanna first talk about how I've been using it. And it's actually been my primary squat stand for about six weeks now. Now, personally, I feel that as a squat stand, it works pretty well. It is a little bit wider than your typical squat stand by about two inches, but with the two inch material on the outside, it really doesn't cause a re-racking issue, but it will cause slight issues if you use a bent style bar. For instance, I use the duffalo bar for a lot of my squat movements, and because it is a little bit wider, I can't really angle the J-cups in so that the bar stays vertical. So what I have to do before I do a lift is just rotate the bar up. Again, it's not anything that's actually significant. It's just a slight note that I've noticed from use. As for stability, I stored all my 45s located on the back loading pins for all of my training. This has made the yoke so that it's very heavy, very stable. And when I walk into the rack, even though the weight is only on the back pins, I don't notice any sort of major instability issues that occur, like I have noticed that occurs with other squat stands. Another thing I noticed is that the J-cups, because the J-cup is a five inch diameter J-cup, when you put it into the three quarter inch hole, there is a little bit more slop, which causes the J-cup to tilt forward just slightly. It doesn't actually affect the functionality of using the J-cups, but it is just something of note, especially that when the bar is loaded, you'll notice that it has a tendency to come to the front of the J-cup. Now, because the Mike Bartos Power Center J-Cups and the Rogue J-Cups that I've been using both have a lip on the front, that's not really an issue. And if I'm being honest, there are a lot of lifts that that is actually a standard procedure that I do where I roll the bar to the front of the J-Cups before I actually do a lift off. I've also used the Cleva Belt Landmine and put it up here on these holes. And what I found is that the Cleva Belt Landmine works just fine. This works fine as a landmine base. However, it could be better because the holes are located 24 inches up at the lowest setting. If landmine movements are important to your training and having the landmine anchor point low is also vital, this yoke likely will not work too well for you unless you have it specially modified to be able to mount that lower. I haven't used any other attachments, but I imagine that anything that was made for a two by three inch rack with five ace inch hardware would work just fine on this rack. Mike Bartos Power Center does offer a set of J-cups as well as safety spotter arms for this, and you can buy those when you buy the yoke itself. However, they don't have any UHMW lining in them, so for me, it was a pretty hard pass. Now for just a normal yoke walk, it works great. The load being so middle to the vertical portion creates a wonderful feeling when you pick the weight up. It doesn't feel unstable, it feels perfectly balanced. Everything is pointed the correct direction. Because it's a welded unit, that's actually a really big plus because Mike Bartos had to take the time to make sure that this was perfectly in line with the foot on each side. For mine, it is very well squared up and has no issues with being straight, being true, and working perfectly as a yoke. Additionally, as I mentioned before, the textured powder coat is so nice that it has a really good way of just sticking on your back exactly where you want it. With the cross member being a three inch diameter cross member, when you drop it down and carry it zerker style, it doesn't offer any additional pain that would be considered abnormal. 
And if a Conan's wheel is in a competition that's coming up for you, that could be a really good way for you to get used to carrying something in the front rack position. Now something to note in a big thing that is different between this rack and some of the other competitors is that it is a single bar design, which is pretty common. However, it only has this five inch bracket that is in line with the center of the bar. Other competitors will use a four pin design and basically they'll have a gusset here and it comes down. This might seem like a design flaw from Mike Bartos, but after using this thing, I'm telling you that it isn't a flaw, it's a feature. Because of the design of this, adjusting this thing up and down, whether it's unloaded or loaded or putting it together initially is way easier. And when you couple this smaller area that you have to line up with a welded unit that can't cant back and forth, depending on which way it was used last time, this yoke is probably the easiest to assemble for a 90 inch tall yoke ever. One additional thing that this has that the others don't as well is the tightening knob that's located over on the end. And once you actually tighten this thing down, what you find is that basically all of the slop, all the side to side slop that is normally there before you tighten it down, and that's on any brand of yoke. There's definitely some built in slop there so that you can actually slip this through. When you tighten it down, it is pretty much all gone and it feels good. There's no like when you pick it up, there's no loud like clink as everything kind of falls onto the pins. It's just nice. One thing to note though, because of the single bar design and because I'm using it as my main squat rack, when I put it all the way up and I want to do pull-ups on it, it is difficult to do a pull-up on a three inch bar, although it is a good grip workout. But one way that I've gotten around this is to just take the standard carabiner and strap like grip thing that comes with all the grip tools, this thing. And this actually wraps around the bar so easily. And then what you can do is take a parallel landmine grip or take the four-way grip from Mike Bartos Power Center or any other sort of implement, and you can do pull-ups on that and it works just fine. Additionally, I did say earlier that there was an issue with it being 90 inches tall and trying to carry through a 80 inch opening. If you lay it down, adjust the cross member all the way down to the 24 inch point, you can actually pick it up and carry it and it's pretty well balanced, which is a big plus, especially if you consider that you don't wanna to have to take this thing apart and put it together every single time you take it in and out of the garage. All right, so that covers the overview of the yoke itself, as well as how I've used it. And those are basically all of my training notes. So like I said, it functions well as a yoke. You can also use it to do Zerker carries, which I've also talked about. Another really cool way you can use this thing is you can actually buy this and use it as a push, pull, and a uh, like a sled drag. So like as a sled, this actually works pretty well, loaded and unloaded. One thing that I have noticed that it is not very good for though, is using it for throwing a sandbag over bar. And again, that's the, one of the big limitations with the welded end caps at the top of the uprights. Normally when you have two by three inch material, what you can do is you can go by two by threes and you can make a bag over bar apparatus so that if you throw a sandbag or keg or kettlebell or whatever you throw, you can actually raise up and create a standard so that you know whether or not you threw the bag or bar or other implement high enough to get over the bar. A two by three is really handy because it's one and a half inch inside diameter by two and a half inch and it fits perfectly into the end of the yoke. Because this has the sealed off end cap at the top, I would say that that is a slight limiting factor because you can't really use it for that. I would note, however, that each and every single one of the Mike Bartos Power Center pieces of equipment are one offs. So if that's something that you want, or maybe you're a competition facilitator and you're gonna buy some of these, I would contact Mike Bartos and just say when you place your order like, hey, leave the tops of the vertical pieces open so that I can use them to do X, Y, or Z. There are of course many other ways to do any sort of movements with a yoke. I did this uh, arm over arm thing where I basically take some pro lock collars, I throw them on the loading pins and I'll show it to you here without any weight loaded. It does work really, really well to basically take those two pro lock collars, tie them together and then do an arm over arm with the rope. It is really up to you and like everything with a garage gym piece of equipment, it's up to you on how versatile you decide that you're going to make it. All right, so now some quick feedback that I would give to Mike Bartos. Uh, first off, 
The hole spacing is just fine. Personally, I don't think that you should switch things over to any sort of one inch hole spacing throughout a bench area. I think that two inches on center works just fine. But one thing I would consider doing is moving the cross member so that it can go all the way down to the bottom and still be pinned in place. This not only will make it easier for landmine movements, but it'll also make it a little bit more convenient when you're doing sled push movements and you maybe want to lower it a little bit further down than 24 inches. There's one other area that is actually, uh, it's a very small thing, but it gets super annoying. So when you're adjusting the detent pin, or the hitch pin rather, up and down, you have to take out the cotter pin that's on the end that holds the pin in place. The problem is that this is a non-retained cotter pin, and so you tend to like put this somewhere, hold, try to hold it in your mouth, it inevitably drops on the floor. One way that you can improve is by switching from using a hitch pin with a cotter pin that's separate, to a hitch pin with a retained cotter pin. That way, all that you have to do is control the one and you always have the cotter pin right there in order to pin it in the end. The last thing is provide some sort of UHMW lining for the J-cups and maybe the safety spotter arms. This is a small upgrade. I know that it comes with a cost, but I think that people that are willing to purchase your J-cups and your safety arms would want them to be UHMW coated. Again, when you buy premium equipment, you want those premium little niceties and you do offer a whole bunch of really quality material. So adding that UHMW to the J cups and the safety spotter arms would be basically the icing on the cake to make your safety spotter arms and your J cups more desirable for the standard person. That's it for feedback though. There's nothing serious. It's all just kind of little nitpicky things but I would like to go over a quick market comparison. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is the, of course, Mike, Bar Mike Bartos Power Center Pro Economy Yoke. The Pro Economy Yoke ships freight and costs $606 as I purchased it. Now that does not include J cups, that does not include the safety spotter arms. However, if you wish to purchase those, they are a drop down menu on the website to purchase and have shipped. Additionally, if you add those to the shipping, it didn't actually raise my shipping cost at all when I was doing my market comparison. Comparison. The near peer competitor to Mike Bartos Power Center would probably have to be Rogue Fitness with their Y2 yoke. I have owned the Y1, which is the shorter version of the Y2, and the whole reason that I'm here doing this video is because I wanted a taller yoke with all welded construction. I did consider buying the Y2 because it was taller, but it didn't satisfy my desire for a welded construction yoke. Now, if we take those two, so we have the Mike Bartos and we have the Rogue, and we compare them just price-wise, how much would it cost to get to you? So what I did is because Mike Bartos Power Center is in Ohio and Rogue is in Ohio, I just threw my old address in Texas into the redonculator and did a quick calculation on how much it would cost shipped for both the Y2 as well as the Mike Bartos Power Center Pro Economy Yoke. The, the freight charge, because you have to use freight to ship this thing because it's a welded construction, was $325 from Mike Bartos Power Center. The Rogue, because it's a bolt together design, they can, and because they also have a ton more shipping that they do through UPS, they're able to get their shipping cost all the way down to $95, although it should be noted that I was paying sales tax in the state of Texas. This brought the totals to $930.79 for the Mike Bartos Power Center, and that shipped basically from Ohio to Texas, well, the construction and $761.41 for the Rogue. And again, that includes shipping as well as tax, which they do have to charge tax in certain states. Now, the budget option out there is obviously going to be the king of replicas, the copycat of everything, Titan Fitness. You can get the T3 Tall, which is a two by three design yoke. It is 92 inches tall and you can get that for $379.99 shipped, which is insane. That's absolutely insane. Now it is a, basically they, uh, they tried to copy the Rogue Y2 when they designed the T3 Tall, but as with most Titan Fitness equipment, it is pretty much the exact same thing, just not as nice. One of the big areas that I found after using the T3 Tall is that the T3 Tall's powder coat is definitely not as grippy, it's definitely smoother. And in competition, that caused some really big headaches for me because when you're carrying a heavy yoke on your back and you're doing it for time, when the yoke starts to slip off your back, be 
because it doesn't really have a grippy powder coat, it starts to get your anxiety up. I did use it at Oklahoma's Strongest Man in 2019. I did, still did pretty well at that competition, but I did have a drop and I did incur a slide penalty. And although, yes, it is my fault, it's also Titan Fitness's fault. Now there is a future competitor as well, and that's Rep Fitness. And I'm really happy that I took my time making this video because Rep Fitness just released their video and they have their new yoke that will be coming out early 2022. I do plan on getting one of those. It looks to be very similar, bolt together design, although it does seem to be short, kind of hoping they offer a tall version. I can't do a comparison of it right now, but I will be purchasing one down the road and doing a full review on it. There are other market competitors as well, but I wanted to keep it to two by three design with vertical loading. So I excluded some from Elite FTS, although they do make a solid yoke, as well as a whole bunch of different manufacturers out there that are local to different areas like Texas Power Concepts, Music Metal Works down in Texas, as well as basically find a fabricator anywhere that knows how to build strongman equipment and they can make you a really solid yoke. In conclusion, the MB Power Center Pro Economy Yoke is a really good piece of equipment. It offers a unique welded design and it is very sturdy, very well made. And of course, you are supporting a super small American owned business when you do any business with Mike Bartos. I do think that for most people, this will not be the yoke that they end up choosing. This offers all of the support that you want in a tall yoke. It is a great yoke and in my opinion is better than the Rogue Y2 just by a little bit. I will do a side-by-side -side comparison later. But I think that that additional cost that's going to be incurred is just going to be too much for the normal person. So unless you're able to go and actually pick up the yoke because you live close to Ohio, I would say that you probably want to take a look at the Rogue Y2 as well as looking at this. There's nothing wrong with the Mike Bartos yoke. However, that shipping cost is just something that inherently is going to be high when you have an all welded unit. But that's been it for this review. I appreciate you guys that watch every single time that I put these things out. And remember, when it comes to your garage gym, you should always keep it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next week.